Hello, welcome to the Purpose Zone. For those of you entering the zone for the first time, my name is Marilyn. I invite you to come into the zone where we learn how to change how we see ourselves in order to create strategies and connect with resources to rebuild our life after personal setbacks. Now, we're going to talk about how to prepare for the test because when you get into a relationship with someone that you think might be Mr. or Mrs. Wonderful, there if they are an undercover abuser, there is a test coming. There is going to be a test. You might as well get prepared for it. So this is where you're going to really journalize your way to the next level. Get out your journal and during your personal time, your alone time, you want to start documenting different things that you're seeing in yourself and in, and coming from the other person so that you can be sure that you're checking things out along the way. Now, the purpose of a test, when you're with a someone who has an abusive personality, you know they're going to come on first with that real serious charm factor. And the purpose of the test that they're going to put you through is for them to be able to get a handle on just how much you're going to let them get away with. That is the purpose of the testing that an undercover abusive personality is going to put you through. Okay, so first is going to be, of course, the overwhelming charm that we've talked about in other videos, and that involves the bum rush. They're going to come on strong. They're going to be in love real fast. They're going to buy gifts, unexpected gifts, expensive gifts. Um, if once you agree to go out with them, then they're going to really turn on the charm factor because they're going to want you to meet their family members like right away. Uh, the things I've I've observed the most is the guy that. He barely knows the young lady's last name. They've only been seeing each other a week or two. Went out to a couple of movies, spent a couple of evenings watching TV together or something. And he starts talking a lot about how his mom wants grandchildren. You see this a lot with the younger women. And he doesn't have any children yet. And he doesn't have any plans to get married. But he wants you to feel that he's a family man. He's interested in having children, that his mother's really been pushing him to give her some grandchildren. I remember when I was a younger woman, the first thing I would say to a guy that talked to me like that was, oh, so you have plans to get married one day uh, soon. So that means you're, you're, not, you're dating for information, right? You're dating because you're looking for a wife, someone to settle down with, someone to spend your life with, to start a family with. And he would backpedal off of that real quick. <laughs> So I knew this was a test. This was someone trying to get me to feel comfortable about a man that is a family man, especially if you have kids already. If you're a single parent, you got to really watch out for this. Okay. Uh, but there's going to be the constant push, 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 the bum rush. The person that bum rushes you, they're pushing you very quickly into a deep relationship. They're going to want to move in right away. Maybe they start buying you microwaves or different things around the house that they see that you need. If you let them come to your home and saying things like, you know, you need to be stable. You need to be, um, you need this. I see that you needed this and I just wanted to provide for you. So when that's going on and it's happening really fast and they're constantly texting and calling and, you know, I mean, they can be a real gentlemen sometimes you I mean show up and change the oil in your car they're doing all of these things they're coming on real strong real fast of course you would naturally think well this is a nice guy but what you want to do is take time to observe see how long this is going to last make sure this is really their personality remember the early part of a relationship is the honeymoon phase you're walking on cloud nine everybody is showing up and being the best representative of themselves that they can be in the early part of the relationship you're not dating the real person they're not dating your real person you haven't had a chance to really get to know each other we all put our best foot forward when we first meet somebody so we're you're both uh, in the beginning of the relationship. You're both in the, in the testing phase. This is still a test. If this person is an undercover uh, abusive personality, the charm factor will continue until you guys start living together. So the very first things that you're going to see that is going to maybe start giving you some red flags and you really need to write in your journal while you're journalizing your way to the next level. You want to see what level this is going to. Some of the first things you're going to see is going to be non-physical. They're going to be things like I just recently read 
um, a really good book that I recommend to everybody, Steiner, uh, was Leslie Steiner. It's called Crazy Love, written by Leslie Steiner. And she talks about the first time she took this guy to her home to meet her mother uh, and, and that he was not he wasn't really respectful to her because they had already been dating for several months and in the very beginning he had told her about how he had grown up in a, in a very, very traumatically abusive childhood. It was devastating and she, every time he mentioned anything about his childhood and how bad him and his, his uh, siblings and his mom had been abused, she would just cry. The tears she said would just stream. But she never had told him that she had grown up in a home where there was alcoholism and, and she had suffered some abuse of her own. So the first time she took him to her house and she, he met her mom and he got to see the neighborhood that she lived in and that kind of thing. They've been dating a few months. She started opening up as they were going for a walk and telling him some of the abusive things that she had put up with as a child. Some of the abandonment and uh, rejection that she had experienced. And she was shocked when he turned on her very um, viciously, verbally, all verbal. He didn't hit her, but he went on and on about how spoiled she was, that she lived in a great neighborhood, that her parents were wealthy, and what was she whining about. And there was, no, there, in other words, she wasn't whatever she experienced wasn't as bad as what he had went through. And how dare you complain, yada yada. So he. He minimized what she had experienced and act like it wasn't important, whereas every time he had talked about his uh, abusive episodes in his life, she had just cried and, and demonstrated that she was overwhelmingly moved by his experience. She didn't get the same compassion and empathy in return from him. Okay, okay, I am going to go off on her and see if she continues to see me. Now, if you if if she had been thinking, if she had known that this was a red flag, that this was actually part of an undercover abusive personality experience, that would have been a good time to walk away. However, she was thinking that he was hurt so badly that if she just hung in there, that he would come to understand how much she loved him and that he would be, um, receive her love to such a deep degree that he would understand that he didn't have to be angry anymore and he would be able to see her side of things just as easily as he could see his because something about her overwhelming love is going to melt his heart or whatever, break down barriers, or whatever. I have seen this happen over and over and over again. I know lots of women, especially when I used to go to the shelters and work in the domestic violence shelters a lot. I met just hundreds of women who were there. They always talked about how they were hoping that they could change him. They, they were hoping that eventually he would change, that if she kept putting up with X, Y, and Z, that eventually he would change, okay? But these are things that you're getting to see in his personality that are not physical, okay? Then... The second phase of this, the second test, is still not physical, but it's non-physical to an elevated degree. I like to put it that way because I used to see this a lot in the shelters. I mean, just I've when I worked in the shelters in multiple different states, especially when I was traveling with the military, I would meet woman after woman after woman that would tell me the story about how their boyfriend or husband had locked them out of the house when they were undressed. They got into an argument about something while she was getting out of the shower or getting changed for bed or whatever, and things would escalate till he would end up pushing her out of the house and locking the door with her not having any clothes on. Uh, I had one woman tell me that all she had was a bath towel. I had another lady to tell me about the situation where she didn't have any clothes on at all. Um, and I've, I've heard that story thousands of times. Now, the guy had never hit them, but that was still abusive and that was still a test. I'm going to see, now you've let me get by with verbally belittling you. You've let me get by with um, maybe treating you differently when we're around certain people. Maybe he's run, you run into an old girlfriend or old boyfriend with them in the mall and suddenly... They get so engrossed in a conversation with that other person, they don't introduce you, and it's like they forgot that you're there. 
that subtle disrespect to me that's blatant disrespect but for some people they don't get it um it, it can maybe turn into a verbal altercation like you know how come you didn't introduce me why did you ignore me this and that was that someone that you've been seeing before is that someone that you're currently dating you know i was i was made to feel that i was in the way there will be that type of conversation but you have been disrespected and you have been mistreated and you've went through a test where you're still talking to this person after they have shown you all of these non-physical clues. Now, the non-physical um, uh, clue that is non-physical elevated can be things like um, mistreating your children. I remember meeting a woman in a shelter about, oh, I guess 10 or 12 years ago, where she said that the guy that she was involved with, they weren't, they weren't married, and uh, the abuse became bad enough that she was in a shelter that was trying to actually move her to another state to get her away from him, and it had gotten that bad. But she was telling me that in the beginning, this guy was a single parent, and so was she. And in the beginning, whenever they hung out together, he would say kind of nasty things to her children while he was really treating his children like gold and she allowed it she would overlooked it initially and then she started kind of saying gingerly saying things to him about it but the fact that she still went on to end up having sex with him living moving in with him living with him and pro progressing the relationship forward in spite of what he was showing her with the way that she he mistreated her children was a test that she did not pass. This is non-physical elevated where I am going to do things to you in front of you. Like, like I said in this example, this woman was telling me about how this guy always talked really nasty to her kids and while they would have all the kids together and would be really nice to to his kids and i've seen this i've seen had this conversation with many women in the shelters down through the years but they continue in the relationship with the person until it gets far enough that they can feel comfortable about beating you up another non-physical form of abuse abuse elevated that i have seen this situation happen so much until i i'm I'm clueless as to how people put up with this, but I've talked to many women in shelters where they got locked in a closet or an, an interior room in the house where there were no windows or somewhere that they could not get out and we'd be locked in there for several days. Sometimes I remember one lady telling me she was locked in a closet for like three days. He wouldn't let her out to use the bathroom. In fact, she heard him leave the room when he locked her in the closet and it wasn't until he finally let her out three days later that she realized that he had not only locked her in the closet but he had been gone the whole time had never come back to the apartment knowing he had left her in there um, I met uh, one young lady that said that this happened on a regular before they started living together he would come over to see her and would lock her in her closet in her own home and why she proceeded on with the relationship well there's there's many reasons why people stay in these relationships and I can get real scientific with you but I'm not gonna do that today but there's actually chemical changes that go on in the brain that cause a person who has come from an abusive background already maybe they had an abusive childhood maybe they had some other type of trauma like we talked about at the beginning like I mentioned at the beginning of this video and those 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 trauma events actually release a chemical response in the brain that releases certain hormones that causes a person that when they begin to experience these other escalating little traumas that there are things that happen in the brain that release certain chemicals that puts them in a position where they're unable to think, unable to properly uh, make decisions unable to properly get out of the situation and just because they're verbally maybe arguing with a brother or a sister or somebody that's saying you need to leave that person alone whatever whatever just because they're verbally arguing back doesn't mean that there's not a chemical uh, change that has taken place in their system that keeps them from being able to respond appropriately okay one day I'll go into a long explanation of that because it is kind of long and detailed and very very scientific and very chemically oriented but we're not going to do that today okay so those are some of the tests now after you've got they've gone past the non-physical test with you and they see that 
they have passed the test, you didn't. Then they do the non-physical elevated, they passed the test, you didn't. Because you've given them a pass, they have passed. Okay? But you failed that test because you didn't see what they were doing. Okay? How they were setting you up. So then this person is going to really push to move in together. Because now they've got some, some clues about who you are, how far you're going to let them go. So the purpose of the testing is to see just how much they can get by with. Okay, just how much can they get by with? Now, I had a young lady to tell me that actually things had gotten pretty bad before she and this guy moved in together. Uh, he had slammed her head against a wall. They were, she said she didn't think they were arguing about anything. They had, she had disagreed with him about something. She didn't even see it coming. And she had, wasn't even looking at him and he slammed her head into the wall. Well, about six months or so later, she still moved in with him after this incident had happened. He never apologized to her. And she said that when they did talk about it, he told her that she was saying something that was aggravating him and that uh, it, it, it um, triggered him or pushed his buttons and that this is what she made him do. Okay, so the fact that you're still talking to him long enough after that incident for you guys to get to into a conversation and get to a place where you're talking about moving in together, that's a problem. But this person has now seen that you have passed all their tests in order for you to be set up for them to know that it's going to be safe for them to begin to brutalize you and to begin to envelop your life in an abusive relationship situation. Because this is a test and these little tests that go along with the buildup to what's going to happen works. This person already has an assurance. Yes, this person is bruised enough. They're traumatized enough. They're hurt enough. They're hurt deeply enough. They, um, their heart is broken enough. And they're damaged enough that they will ignore all of my crazy craziness and allow me to slither in deep enough to get them in a place where I am now in charge of your whole domain and I can treat you whichever way I want. I can abuse you to my heart's desire. You will become my punching bag. You will become the person that I almost destroy because you have given me permission by giving me a pass on all those early tests. Does that make sense to you? I hope it does. And the, uh, In the near future, I'm going to do try to go into a little bit deeper the chemical changes that take place in the brain that causes a person who has had an abusive background already which unfortunately there's just a lot of abused people out there in our communities there's lots of children who have grown up in abusive homes who have have grown all of us have some type of dysfunction in our life but if you grew up in a dysfunctional family environment where as a child you were abused and you have went from one trauma situation into another and maybe to escape that you went into the military and immediately got deployed and then you went into a um, situation uh, of, of a war zone situation and now you've got PTSD on top of the other trauma experiences that you've had there is a chemical imbalance going on in your body that is releasing hormones in such a way that will cause you to remain trapped in an abusive situation with someone that is not going to leave you they are going to make sure that they're faithfully there to abuse you. And you haven't really found a safe place to land. People who have been traumatized, you need, emotionally, you need a safe place to land. And when your body is used to the chemicals that circulate, that say, accept trauma, live with trauma, you're exposed to trauma, you're responding to trauma, Maybe just someone consistently being there is enough to placate that part of you that is dysfunctional enough to feel that this is a safe place to land because this person is not going to leave you. They may not be treating you right, but trauma is something you're used to. Does that make sense? And that's why so many people don't leave. When we say, well, how come she doesn't leave that abusive person? Why? How come he doesn't leave that abusive marriage? Because... This is a safe place to land. This is familiar ground. I hope that makes sense to you. But once again, let me say if you are, uh, this is your first time in the zone, I'm hoping that you will subscribe. 
uh, and make sure that you join me again in the zone. I have got many more things that I'm going to be sharing in the future that I'm hoping that will help change your life, help you move forward, help you not only survive, but get your life back so that you can do your destiny. Thank you.